Welcome, folks. This is another edition of Tiffin Cast, and today I'm speaking with Boston based wedding photographer Krista Ginnan. And Krista, you know, uh, and I've met a number of times. Uh, we met at Inspire, I think it was the last time we met. Inspire is a, a series of uh, seminars that takes place not too far from where I live in Connecticut. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to meet people like Krista who are very inspirational, uh, go out and do things in the world, and come back and tell us about it. And today, you know, I really wanted to talk to Krista about uh, a project that she's uh, put her heart and soul into. And uh, it's very, very clear that this is very important for her. And, and when I saw how uh, important it was for her, I figured... You know, I really should jump in and tell you guys about this project as well because uh, it is it is a very um, uh, I, I'm going to say it right out. It's a challenging project. Uh, it's not an easy project to to work on. Uh, but um, before I say anything, I want to say, Krista, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. No, I'm really excited to have the chance to share this with people, and uh, I just feel very honored that you you know, want to hear a bit more about our project because I'm, like you said, it's very close to my heart and I really am very passionate about it. <laughs> Definitely. Um, let's sort of rewind a bit. I wanted to talk a little bit about how this project even got started, uh, what you've done to, to, to actually get it off the ground, which is to go out to India and photograph in India. Um, so let's start there. I mean, how, do, how did you, first of all, hear about this project? Um, my friend Grant Nisley, who um, is just starting a company called Code Red Films, um, and he and I met working on a project years ago, like eight years ago in Sri Lanka, and met briefly. We both had a very similar passion um, and a desire to use our lives and our gifts. He's a videographer. I'm a photographer. Um, we both are passionate about using our gifts to tell stories that are hard to get to um, and to uh, shed light on things that maybe people, especially people in America, probably have never really seen or experienced. So that's when we first met and uh, we've been in touch ever since then. Um, back in September of last year, he just Facebook messaged me and was like, hey, want to go to Nepal and work on a project with me? Um, and I was like, well, tell me more. Um, and he uh, shared with me uh, about um, this group of people who he had just heard about himself. Um, the people group in Nepal is called the Body People. And in the caste system, they're like the lowest of the low. Um, they are uh, traditionally a prostitution caste. And what's happening with this young generation of girls um, is that they are being uh, sold into brothels in India. Um, traditionally, uh, the body people would be prostitutes within their own communities, which in and of itself is a hard thing forced upon them by the caste system, and it's, it's awful. Um, but what we're seeing now is that it's more financially helpful to families to just sell their daughters into sex slavery. And the situ, like he sent me testimonies of these girls who had been rescued, which is in and of itself a miracle. And uh, just reading what they'd gone through and just what their situation was like in India um, was just really heartbreaking and um, my assistant was in that day and uh, I just was sitting at my desk like weeping um, and so in reading these testimonies and hearing about these stories I knew that I had to be part of the project I just knew that it wasn't something that I couldn't do something about and being a photographer located in the US like you just feel kind of helpless like, what can I do to help these people, um, these girls in particular? And uh, so given this opportunity to go and actually use my talents for some good um, really made all the difference in the world. And it was really exciting to get to be part of the project at all. Um, 
but like you said, yeah, it's definitely a challenge. Um, you know, we've talked for about six or seven minutes so far, and you know, neither one of us has really talked about the the, the title of the project. Um, and I think, from my perspective, I mean, I'm from India, and and you know, the the very word untouchable is is so loaded, um, yeah. and uh, I'm sure. You've you've heard you know people in Nepal probably speak of this as well, and I'd, I'd mentioned early on that this was a project that you did in in India, but it's cross border. I mean, it's not yeah. just not just in India, but it's a it's a it's an issue that sort of starts in Nepal and grows sort of bigger and and more challenging in India perhaps, um, and it, and the project is called Untouchable Children of God, and. It's an Indiegogo project that you know, where you're trying to raise money for uh, for these women, uh, for these girls, right? Yes. Uh, and it's and much of it is to tell their stories, essentially. Exactly. So, the project is called Untouchable Children of God. You know, untouchable uh, because in reality, that's what most people kind of think of as the the name of that cast, but also children of God because that's the translation for the word that Gandhi came up with uh, for that cast. Um, but for us, really, there's the irony of the fact that these women are called untouchable, but they are touched more brutally um, than pretty much anyone else could uh, could be. So, um, yeah, so our Indiegogo campaign is really, right now it's focused on raising the funds to finish the project. Um, we've taken two trips to India and two trips to Nepal thus far, gathering film and footage and, and images. Um, but now we're in the post-production phase, which, you know, is very time-consuming and mm -hmm. expensive and mm -hmm. so we're trying to raise the money to finish the project so that we can actually have a film to show. Um, it's really our hope, you know, there are these young girls um, and a lot of people who work in the anti-trafficking industry who have uh, trusted us with their stories mm -hmm. um, and so we really want to make it count. Um, so we're trying to raise the money to finish the film and then also our goal obviously from there is to get it in front of as many people as possible. Um, we're hoping to send it to film festivals and um, I mean ideally it would be picked up um, by somebody like PBS or CNN or who knows. Um, really we feel like uh, this project has just been so blessed so far, so many things have happened that we could never have imagined on our own. So right. we're just really hoping that uh, people will see it and meet these girls and mm -hmm. that they'll be like touched um, and they'll grow to love these girls in a way that would make them actually want to do something. Um, whether it's give money uh, to any of the organizations that helped us mm -hmm. and that are helping um, girls uh, trapped in sex slavery um, or to get involved somewhere locally because this is not just an issue in, in Nepal and India is all over the United States it's all over the world no matter what community you live in it is in your hometown it's right in your backyard you just may not know it um, so we're just hoping that people will be moved to do something um, and to not uh, sit back and let this happen you know uh, uh, like 150 years ago, people fought to end slavery in this country um, and in Europe, and and it and it worked. And I really believe that it that could ha that could happen again. I mean, mm -hmm. it's illegal in most places, but it's going to take a much bigger fight to make it actually end. Now. Definitely. Uh, when you were in India, uh, or when you were in Nepal, in one of those trips, w w was there any one particular girl that you connected with uh, personally and you, you felt like you had to follow them and photograph their lives in a, in a, in a, in a way that made it possible, will, will make it possible for folks outside, uh, you know, their, that, that, that entire situation, I guess, to understand what exactly goes on in a, in a young girl's life? Yeah, um, there were definitely two girls in particular 
both of whom we interviewed, um, who I feel very close to. I mean, I just love these girls. Um, they're both girls that have been rescued. Uh, it's almost impossible to actually interview girls who are trapped in the brothels. Sorry. That's fine. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, seeing their life on the other side and hearing their stories uh, from what it was like um, when they felt completely hopeless um, and to see them now, you know, they're still young. Um, I think they're both actually 16 now. Uh -huh. uh, so they would have been 15, 14 when they were um, enslaved. And uh, to see them like laughing with their friends and uh, going to school and getting an education. And um, they, one of the girls, I was just reading a part of her transcript from our last interview with her and she, she wants to be a lawyer and like her mission in life is to help free more girls. Um, and like when she thinks about this film, like her heart goes out to the girls she knows who are still trapped. And um, it's just really touching to me mm -hmm. uh, to know her and to hear, to hear her thoughts about it, you know, uh, right. not just her story, but what she thinks and feels about all of this. And um, we actually, the coolest experience on the last trip for, for me personally was um, we turned the tables um, around for them. We got to put the two girls behind the camera and they actually interviewed me. Um, and I wasn't really sure what to expect. I didn't know like what kind of questions they would ask. And yep. um, the first question they asked was, uh, what did you think about us when you first met us? And, uh, and then they wanted to know why, um, why we were helping them. And it was just really cool to get to share that with them. And, what did you tell them? Um, well, when I first met them, I think uh, <laughs> I was so nervous being filmed. Honestly, I don't totally remember <laughs> what I told them, but it might be in the film. Um, but when I first, you know, I just remember telling them that they, like, I was just so blown away by how strong they are um, and how much hope they have now. Mm -hmm. um, and just feeling like this enormous love in my heart for them um not just like pity or sympathy but like just love i just want good things for them and i want their lives to um be what they dream they are that so that they would not be uh, stuck with the stigma of what's happened to them um and then as far as you know why we're helping them i mean Okay, like kind of like I mentioned before, when I heard their stories, it's I really didn't feel like I had a choice, um, like I needed to do something, and um, you know. And then after meeting them, it's become very personal to me uh, what's happening um, in Nepal and India. And uh, so, doing this film, um, you know, maybe when the project got started, it was a cool idea. It was exciting to be part of something. That might make a difference in the world, but now it's personal and it's something that um, means a lot to me uh, that, that this changes because um, what's happening to these girls is just not, it's not acceptable. It's not okay and um, something has to change. Most definitely. Um I'm going to put, throw you a curveball, and I think it's it's an important th issue that we, we definitely discuss. Um, I just came back from India uh, where a photojournalist, a woman, was gang raped in, in, in a city like Mumbai. Yeah. Um, so the curveball is this. Who are you making this film for? Is it for mm. other women or is it for the guys? Is it for guys to see how how truly human these girls are, you know? Yeah, that's really something that's come out of this project for me. I think it's for men and women. It's for everybody. Um, you know, I think that definitely there's a big part of me that hopes that a lot of people in India will get to see this film. Um, because that is where a lot of the change needs to take place. Um, 
and also obviously we, most of the team, well, half the team are Americans. And so we really want um, people in America to, to see it and, and to see what's happening. But for me, it, it's exactly what you just said. Um, it is the way that men see women mm-hmm. um, in India specifically, uh, but in the world in general. Uh, you know, it is very distorted. It's very uh, selfish. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that the, the time is very ripe in India right now to be talking about this and to be producing a film like this because, um, because of all that's happened, all of the gang rapes, um, and the, you know, the big news stories coming out of India right now, it's really, it's frightening. Um, but the fact is that was happening and has been happening for a long time there anyway. Um, it's just when that girl died last December, Mm -hmm. um, it became, uh, something to, that could be discussed publicly, um, whereas it didn't really used to be something that could be talked about. So um, I feel like that's a huge part of the issue that really needs to be addressed is, is how people see women. And, and for me personally, that's a photo project that I'm hoping to work on as the years go by that's coming out of this, as I've been working on getting photographs for the film and for, you know, use in the film and and for the different ministries and organizations that we've worked with, I've definitely been wanting to provide them with images as well. Um, But for me, um, that's kind of the photo project that's going to come out of this for me is going to be on changing the way that men view women and who these girls really are compared to who they're seen as being. That's a great point. Um, when it, when it comes down to, to making the movie, you're saying the movie's been made. The only thing that needs to be done is actually the post-production and the distribution probably, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Yeah. All the editing, um, Grant, the director is coming back to the States. He lives in Singapore. He's coming back to the States, uh, this month actually to work on the soundtrack, um, We've got an amazing violinist who's going to be um, doing the whole soundtrack for us, which is pretty exciting. And then there's, we still have a few interviews to uh, transcribe and then, you know, just putting everything together so that it tells the story well and beautifully. Um, And, uh, you know, subtitles for a lot of it. Um, And then... Yeah, and then from there, you know, actually printing DVDs and, yeah, getting it in front of people who can actually mm-hmm. get it in front of more people. Right, uh, absolutely. We're going to definitely do screenings. Uh, we're hoping to do screenings in Singapore and in Kathmandu um, in December. And then perhaps screenings will be able to start in the U.S. Uh, in 2014. Um, and that's going to be a big project in and of itself so there's a lot to do (laughs) most definitely um the last question i have for you is uh something that is inspired because of something you'd said um uh, how much of this project is faith-based um uh a part of it is um definitely the majority of the team that's been the core team that's been working on it we are uh, Christians, um, but not everyone who's been working, um, you know, uh, directors of, photo- we have a couple director of photography. Um, we've had some cameramen. We have a lot of people who are involved in the project who aren't Christians. Um, some of the organizations that we've worked with have been faith-based. Um, some have not. It, it just all kind of varies. We've definitely gone with, uh, people who we, have been able to connect with. Mm-hmm. Um, some organizations make it more difficult to connect than others. Um, and sometimes just because they're too busy. <laughs> I mean, they're doing really important things and they can't always stop sure. to be filmed. And, and you know, we talked to a lot of people who would talk to us, but we could not interview, especially sure. in India. In, in uh, Nepal, it was a lot easier. Uh, but in India, it... Um, it's not safe. 
Um, there's not a lot of people who, who could talk to us uh, on camera um, just for their own safety, for the safety of the work that they do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we got to interview, not on camera, but in person. I, I wasn't invited into this part of it, um, but right in the heart of the red light district in Mumbai, in Kamathapura, there uh, was a guy who was willing to talk to us and let us go up in his apartment and take footage and, and things like that. And so, and he's, I mean, honestly, he's a pimp. So he's, you know, it's just been really cool to see though, how so many people have been willing to help us, even though some of, I mean, this guy's a pimp and he was still willing to help us, which is really shocking. Um, and for us, you know, that's things we pray into and that we feel like, um, God's helping us with, but it's definitely the, the film isn't going to be relatable only for Christians or anything like that. The, the point of the film is what's happening to these girls. Um, and, and we certainly don't want our faith to get in the way of that, um, being something that people can, can connect with. So. Sure. Can you, uh, do you feel comfortable talking about your personal faith in this, in this project? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I sense that there was, there's something, you know, beyond the, the, the very surface, like, yes, I want to go f help girls, you know, yeah, kind of an approach. Um, I, I want to know if it's okay. I mean, this is an interview, so, uh, and I hope it's okay uh, that we're talking candidly and we're talking honestly about what is it that inspires and what motivates us to do things, uh, you know, that is so far away from our normal day-to-day -day things, you know? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's got to be something very powerful and very amazing that, that says, okay, I'm going to pack my bags and go 10,000 miles. And I have no idea where the heck I'm going, but I'm going to try and find people who are going to help me do, some, do this project, which I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm going to continue doing it anyway. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a phenomenal feeling, I think. Uh, but I think that's fueled by something deeper than I like those girls. You yeah. know what I mean? I, in the sense that I, I want to help those girls. So. Yeah, for me, um, that my faith motivates um, almost everything that I do. And, um, you know, when I became a photographer like 11 years ago, I got into wedding photography because uh, that was the first job I was able to get. Um, and I really like wedding photography. I love weddings. It's great to get to be with people on the happiest days of their lives. Um, but I've always kind of been uh, more drawn to uh, the sadder things. Um, and that same year that I became a photographer, I became a Christian. And um, I went on a missions trip to Mexico. And I just really felt convinced when I got home, like, this is what I'm supposed to do with my life, mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to use my whatever at the time, I didn't think I had any talent at all, but <laughs> whatever talent I have in photography uh, to, to document what God is doing in the world. Um, a lot of people, uh, most people in America really don't believe there's a God um, as far as I, my experience has been, but I see him at work all over the place. And um, for me right now, um, it's really hard uh, for a lot of people uh, to even imagine being able to see God in a project like this um, because it's just so awful and sad. Um, but I see God changing things. And uh, for uh, these girls that we interviewed, um, who I'm particularly connected to, mm -hmm. um, they both, one of them was a Christian before she was even kidnapped and, um, and taken into the brothels. Um, the other one became a Christian later. Um, but to just see how uh, they've transformed in a relatively short amount of time, um, you know, they are, they got back to Nepal from India. Both of them were violent and angry and, I mean, wanted to murder 
any man that they saw. Like it was a really low, horrible place to be and um, to just see how they've uh, been changed, how their hearts have changed and how much they've healed. Uh, to me, that is God at work. And um, that is what motivates me um, because I feel like it's just the beginning. Um, I really believe that uh, this can end. I really believe that God can make that happen. Um, I think he's going to use a lot of human beings <laughs> to do it. Um, but I, I believe that that's, uh, that's what my God can do. So um, that definitely motivates everything behind the project. Um, and it gives me hope <laughs> uh -huh. in the project and in what we're doing because um, I don't know. I, I It would be hard to see hope in this um, for me outside of God. And uh, so, but in uh, with that perspective, I do have a lot of hope. I really do feel like things can change. Krista, thank you so much for your time. Um, I know we, we dive deep, uh, dove deep into a few, pro few topics, uh, definitely talking about faith and photography. Uh, it's definitely a direction that I, I would like to go to, uh, towards with other photographers. So if you know other photographers working on projects uh, that are inspired by faith, let's say, uh, please let them know. I, I'd love to sit and talk to them about uh, their projects as well. Um, yeah. You've got uh, eight days to go, and <laughs> you, you, you are uh, $21,020 uh, out of $50,000 goal. I think you're going to hit it. Um, <laughs> I think we are too. Uh, yes, I absolutely believe it, it will happen. Um, what is your timeline like for... For the for the post production and anything else, I mean, I know you'd said something about having screenings in in, in Singapore and in Nepal. Uh, is that going to be finished? You think by that time frame, or is that the, is that the goal? Yeah, I think the goal is really to have things finished um, by the end of October, um, which is coming up really soon. Um, but the the director uh, Grant he is actually uh, going on unpaid leave from his full-time job uh, starting in like 10 days. And uh, he's going to be able to devote all of his energy. He already is kind of working like a lot of photographers, right? You've got a full-time job and then you're totally devoted to your passion. Right. Um, so I'm really excited for him to get to devote all of his time to it. Um, I think that's going to really help us get to that goal a lot faster. Um, so we're hoping to have it done by the end of October. And then uh, he wants to be in Nepal for a couple more weeks uh, before we do screenings. Um, we'd like to show it to, uh, I know that the girls particularly who were interviewed, we'd like to show it to them and kind of, we really want their like approval and, and like uh, blessing as it were uh, sure. before we screen it publicly um, but we're hoping to do public screenings in Singapore and Kathmandu at least uh, in December early December um, and then uh, over here maybe starting as early as January there will definitely be screening in Boston um, and definitely some on the west coast probably in Chicago as well we're trying to figure out which cities we're gonna really target um, and then see where it goes from there. So awesome. I'll, I'll be sure to keep you posted on that. <laughs> Please do. Please do. That'd be wonderful. Again, Krista Ginnan from Boston, wedding photographer who is working on a project, a personal project called Untouchable Ch Children of God. And it's uh, halfway there. You're halfway there. And I, I'm, I'm praying as well that you are going to get to the $50,000 goal and you'll be able to uh, finish this project uh, by those deadlines. Um, if my audience would like to ask you questions, would you be open to coming back and commenting on Tiffin Box and talking a little bit more about the project? Absolutely. I would love to. Okay. Thank you again. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.